After a year of collecting data on missing and murdered Native Hawaiian women and girls, a task force presents its first official report. KNTV4's Aaron Coogan takes us to the state capitol to share the findings and the greater message in creating a safer Hawaii moving forward. Well, it's easy to get lost in the numbers, all the data and statistics, but a reminder from members of the task force that this fight isn't about those numbers, it's about the faces and people who they represent. Just seeing Constantly seeing people that look like us, aunties, cousins, sisters. Violence toward Native Hawaiian women and girls buried by what they claim to be years of systemic disregard and limited accessibility to population-specific data. The actual estimates of this crisis is a lot worse than we think it is, but this is based off of the best available data we have at this point. Formed to fill that gap, the 22 agency Missing and Murdered Native Hawaiian Women and Girls Task Force for the first time quantifying those racial disparities. A year's worth of data revealing Hawaii having the eighth highest rate of missing persons per capita and more than a quarter of the state's missing girls being Native Hawaiian. And the average profile of a missing child in, the, in Hawaii is a 15-year-old female Native Hawaiian missing on Oahu. Highlighted was how disproportionate those numbers are to the overarching makeup of the state's population, where Native Hawaiian women make up just 10.2 percent of the total population. These are more than statistics, but a shared reality. The report acknowledged issues of poverty and substance abuse as vulnerabilities to violence, and it detailed the involvement of sexual exploitation as it relates to the state's military presence and tourism industry. Violence, such as selling and buying girls for sex, on military bases, hotels, game rooms, massage parlors, and in our own communities. The report finding 43% of the state's sex trafficking cases being Kanaka Maui women trafficked in Waikiki, 38% of individuals arrested for soliciting sex from minors online, as recorded by Operation Keiki Shield, being active duty military. On one hand, these findings are startling. And then on the other hand, this report really doesn't say anything new. Instead, it vindicates and validates what Native Hawaiians, sex trafficking, and gender-based violence service providers and feminist activists have been saying all along and have been told that they were exaggerating or manipulating facts. This report gives me hope that with this data collected, legislators here in this building can continue to work with law enforcement advocates and survivors to craft policies that will protect our women and girls. Of course, ongoing work by the task force hopes to provide more transparency and accessibility to the issue moving forward. Reporting in Honolulu, Aaron Coogan, KITV4 Island News.